Good day. Welcome to the Far Eastern University Public Intellectual Lecture Series. My name is Rita Cusho and I'm from the Political Science Department. Our topic for today is Asian ethical teachings. And there is a need for us to familiarize with these ethical standards in order to balance the Western orientation of the Philippine educational system. This module is going to be divided into three parts. The first part is on Hinduism, the second part is on Buddhism, and the third part is on Confucianism. And we are very privileged to have with us a professor of philosophy at the Ateneo de Manila University, a board member of the Ateneo Center for Asian Studies, and a member of the Technical Committee in Philosophy at the Commission on Higher Education. He is none other than Dr. Manuel D. Jr. Good day, sir. Good day. <coughs> uh, and thank you, sir, for um, accepting our invitation to be part of this lecture series. Welcome to FEU, sir. Um, so, sir, today, um, I think the task at hand is quite, uh, is quite huge because we are going to discuss something that is probably not familiar to many of us because we're going to talk about not only the major religions in Asia, but also the ethical standards um, that go with these religions. So first, um, for this part, sir, we will be talking about Hinduism. Okay. So mm -hmm. can you please give us and our students an overview of this, uh, of this religion and the ethical standards that are attached to this religion? Okay. <coughs> The sources for the ethical standards of Hinduism would be three, Hinduism. three classics. <coughs> the first would be the Vedas. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Vedas are primarily hymns mm -hmm. uh, offered to the gods. Okay, <coughs> and then uh, the second would be the Upanishad, mm -hmm. which is the knowledge portion mm -hmm. of the Upanishads, mm -hmm. and the third would be the. Uh, Hindu classic, the Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. which is part of the epic Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start with the Vedas. No, mm -hmm. uh, the Vedas has a concept uh, name uh, Rita. Okay, mm -hmm. that concept refers to the physical order in the universe, mm -hmm. but eventually it also included the social order. Mm -hmm. So uh, the ethical. Uh, standard there would be to follow the order in the physical universe mm -hmm. and in the society mm -hmm. of, uh, of the Hindus. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but eventually that, uh, that concept of Rita was mm -hmm. surpassed, mm -hmm. uh, substituted with the concept of uh, Atman and Brahman mm -hmm. in the Upanishads. Mm -hmm. okay? The whole aim of the Upanishads, mm -hmm. Upanishad means to sit devotedly. Okay, so you have a picture of a, of a student uh, sitting under a guru, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And the guru gives him uh, a kind of uh, instruction, mm -hmm. okay? And the instruction will be in, in, in terms of, uh, of, uh <coughs> of pitching a water mm -hmm. and then giving the insight, no? Mm -hmm. And the insight there that uh, should be attained uh, would be the the insight into the absolute mm -hmm. uh, without, okay, mm -hmm. and the absolute within, mm -hmm. okay. Eventually, uh, from the many gods, uh, <coughs> polytheism mm -hmm. of Hinduism, mm -hmm. it evolved into henotheism, the worship of of, of chief gods, mm -hmm. and eventually to monotheism. Okay. So the monotheism would be that there is only one God. Mm -hmm. One absolute, mm -hmm. okay, but that one absolute is also identified with the absolute within us. Mm -hmm. In other words, there is a self, an Atman, mm -hmm. in every, in everyone, mm -hmm. in every being, mm -hmm. and in the case of the human person, he must identify, he must realize mm -hmm. that the within in him, mm -hmm. the uh, the absolute within him, within him, mm -hmm. is the same absolute without oh. the Brahman. Okay, okay, and that is achieved by <coughs> by uh, self renunciation mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so he has to renounce uh, desires okay and he has to uh, be compassionate with others okay mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, the second uh, method is the meditation okay where see. the student mm -hmm. is given a mantra mm -hmm. okay and the famous mantra of course is the mantra au which symbolizes that au middle 
Mm, and so the absolute is the beginning, uh, the middle, and the end. Okay. So it, it's okay. like a, a rosary. Yes. No? Uh -huh. no? So you keep saying that until mm -hmm. you get the insight that the Brahman without is identified with the Brahman, Brahman within. within. Okay. okay. <coughs> And that eventually evolved into, <coughs> because in the Upanishad, you have the sacrifice of a god, mm -hmm. okay? And that gi gave, gave way to the caste system, I see. okay? okay yes. And so in the caste system, you have to do your duty, mm -hmm. okay? So the ethical standard there is to realize that the Brahman within, without is the identified with the Atman within, mm -hmm. you have to do your duty, corresponding to your station in life. Okay. And that concept is dharma. Dharma, dharma mm -hmm. is duty. Ah, okay. Okay. So one way to identify oneself with the Brahman mm -hmm. is to do, uh, to renounce, mm -hmm. uh, to do, to do self-renunciation, mm -hmm. to meditate, and to do your duty mm -hmm. uh, corresponding to your station in life. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to the third, mm -hmm. the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, okay. uh, the Bhagavad Gita is the story of uh, <coughs> of uh, uh, Arjuna, who is mm -hmm. the. It's it's really part of an epic Mahabharata, okay. and there is a civil war, mm -hmm. okay. And the story is that uh, you have this leader mm -hmm. of uh, a, a camp of of, of clan, mm -hmm. and he is out to fight his own relatives because mm -hmm. he's a is a it's a part of an epic with okay. there is a a family war mm -hmm. okay <laughs> and so he 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 hesitates mm -hmm. okay because he he will be fighting his own relatives mm -hmm. no <laughs> uh, and the charioteer is the is krishna mm -hmm. the charioteer is really the incarnation mm -hmm. of a god vishnu okay, okay? Mm -hmm. and so uh, the story goes that he he hesitates mm -hmm. and then he asks for advice from krishna mm -hmm. And Krishna tells him that you have to fight. I see. Okay. okay. Uh, <coughs> mm -hmm. Why? Because it is your duty mm -hmm. as a warrior. Mm -hmm. So you have to fight. But uh, in the in the in the story, Krishna introduces the the concept of yoga. Mm -hmm. okay. Yoga literally means yoke. 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 Y o k e. Yes. Okay. It's to bind ourselves. No. Okay. So it's union with the Brahman, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And there are four kinds of yoga. Mm -hmm. The knowledge yoga, mm -hmm. the, uh, devo the yoga of devotion, okay. uh, the karma yoga, mm -hmm. and the raja yoga. Okay. We are very familiar with the last yes. because <laughs> the raja yoga raja. is in terms of uh, exercise, mm -hmm. no? which helps you to eventually meditate. So th the highest uh, kind of yoga is really the knowledge, knowledge yoga okay. because then uh, your whole being is now identified with Brahman. Okay. Yeah, okay. But for those who cannot uh, go directly to that, mm -hmm. so you, you follow the, the Raja yoga and then you have the yoga of devotion uh -huh. similar to our uh, uh, a devotion to a particular incarnation mm -hmm. of the Brahman. Mm -hmm. no? Uh, like our, our devotion to the child Jesus, okay. you know. So, mm -hmm. but the the emphasis there in the Gita is the karma yoga, okay, yes. the yoga uh, of action. Mm -hmm. uh, so situated in the story, mm -hmm. uh, Arjuna mm -hmm. has to do has to fight because mm -hmm. it is his duty as a warrior. Mm -hmm. But he must fight mm -hmm. with no attachment mm -hmm. to the fruits of his action. Mm -hmm. So the, the ethical standard eventually uh -huh, yes. means that you have to do your duty, duty. Okay. okay, but with no attachment to the mm -hmm. fruits of your labor. Mm -hmm. In other words, you must not be attached to whatever is the outcome of your duty. Okay, so whether it you win or lose, yes, you it are is not, you're detached from it. Yes, okay. correct. Okay. Yeah. And okay. you are not asking for reward mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because of what you did. No? Mm -hmm. So... That that would be the ethical standard eventually of mm -hmm. Hinduism, mm -hmm. okay, <coughs> and of course uh, later it evolved of course into uh, because the 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 Gita is part of the Mahabharata, mm -hmm. so there is in in the in the, in the duty mm -hmm. uh, 
in doing your duty with no attachment, you're eventually uh, partaking in the social order. Mm -hmm. So the Rita still comes into, mm -hmm. in, into the picture. Mm -hmm. no? That you're doing uh, your duty with no attachment mm -hmm. is your, uh, is your uh, doing what you are supposed to do because that is what everybody is supposed to do. I see. Okay? To contribute to the social order. I see. All right. Okay. Wow. That's uh, that's quite <laughs> something. So yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I, I'm getting uh, my neurons are really being challenged. No, yeah. but I find this very interesting because um, in sociology mm -hmm. uh, we discuss a bit of the caste, the uh -huh. caste system. Correct. And I think there's a lot of misconception about yes. what the caste system because. Uh, for example, if you have been labeled as the untouchable, yes. then it seems like you have done something in the past life, you know, uh -huh. that uh, pl eventually place you in your present life to that Correct. to that particular caste. And if you're in the Brahman caste, then there are also a lot of explanation. Correct. So Correct. can you please, uh, sir, elaborate on this? Because the concept of the Dharma or the duty that you have mentioned, mm. I think that's something, you know, for Fili that's something for Filipinos. I think that's something that's quite difficult for us to understand because we are very much connected to people, no relationships, and mm. uh, sometimes we are challenged to do our duties because we are overpowered by our desire to have smooth interpersonal relationships. Right, yes. mm. So can you please uh, elaborate on this dharma or duty uh -huh. and the caste in relation to the caste system and uh -huh. why it is an important component of the ethical standards in Hinduism? Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you that mm -hmm. there is a misconception yes. that if you belong to the uh, to the outcast class, mm -hmm. okay, yes. uh, you have committed something <laughs> in the past. Yes. Okay. Uh, but it's really, in other words, it's really uh, a kind of order in mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. We cannot all be Brahmins. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So uh, it's part of their culture that mm -hmm. uh, in the past there was this sacrifice of the gods mm -hmm. you know, and, and and so that gave way to the caste system mm -hmm. but eventually uh, in the hi in the history of of India mm -hmm. uh, when Gandhi mm -hmm. uh, promulgated his uh, philosophy of non-violence mm -hmm. he actually removed mm -hmm. the untouchables okay. you know? okay. he, ma he made them equal with the other uh, class mm -hmm. with the other caste mm -hmm. you know? in other words the untouchable is part of Hindu society, mm -hmm. and they are not supposed to be, you know, looked look down, down upon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look down upon. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, when Gandhi, uh, uh, what what Gandhi proposed in the part of the mm -hmm. liberation of India mm -hmm. from uh, from England, mm -hmm. uh, was to give uh, the untouchables mm -hmm. uh, uh, a place in the Congress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they have representation in the Congress. I see. So okay. they're not. Look down upon. In fact, mm -hmm. one of the untouchables became a mm -hmm. uh, a premier, a, a premier, an official. Oh, oh yeah, see, yes. I see. All right. So it's okay. no, it's no longer mm -hmm. the case. Okay. It's no longer. So uh -huh. the the concept of dharma still plays a very important role mm -hmm. there. No? Mm -hmm. That you are supposed to do your duty corresponding mm -hmm. to your stage in life. Okay. Uh, uh, you're a married person mm -hmm. or a student mm -hmm. or a, a brahmin, mm -hmm. a priest. No. So you have to do your duty, mm -hmm. correspond. In fact, the Gita emphasizes that uh, it's better mm -hmm. to do your duty haphazardly, uh -huh, okay, okay, than to do somebody else's duty seriously. Uh -huh, okay, that's wrong mm -hmm, <laughs> for them. Mm -hmm. so okay, so that means that you have to be consistent in performing the duties that are attached to your to your, your to your stage in your life stage or to in your life. yeah. I see. All right. Okay. So. Um, given that the Brahmin, yeah, all right, uh -huh. is the top of the of the caste, right? How do you now, um, if let's say I'm a, let's say I'm I'm in another caste, uh -huh. how do I achieve that level of uh, castes? Uh, I assume that that would be through following ethical standards. So, aside from doing the duty, self knowledge probably uh -huh. is also important. That's why we have here meditation. Yes. Uh, and compassion, as you have mentioned, yes, uh, self-renunciation. Uh, so what are those um, other things that a person should bear in mind in order to uh, achieve that uh, that bra Brahman, Brahmin, Brahmin. Brahmin within 
and that Brahmin within is consistent yeah. with the Brahmin without. Ah, okay, the Brahman outside <laughs> and the Brahman, the Brahman without. And the Brahman, the Brahman within. within, yes. Okay. okay, can you elaborate on that, sir? So, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this ident identification of the Atman mm -hmm. and the Brahman mm -hmm. is not just something intellectual, no? I uh, see. Like what we are discussing now. Okay. It's a, it's a realization. Uh -huh. In other words, meaning your whole being, mm -hmm. okay, has to find itself in union mm. with the Brahman. I see. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. with, with the absolute without. Mm -hmm. okay. And that is done, of course, <coughs> as I said, mm -hmm. through uh, self renunciation, mm -hmm. uh, compassion. compassion, okay. And then also the, the meditation part, no? mm -hmm. because you have the, the different kinds of yoga mm -hmm. eventually. Mm -hmm. So, um, in, the, in the Hindu, in Hinduism, mm -hmm. the final stage really is the life of, uh, of contemplation. So that's why you have <laughs> you have <laughs> hermits, no? Uh, yes. Okay. And and eventually, in other words, you actor you are actually moving from one mm -hmm. from one class to uh, to to the mm -hmm. to the to the highest class, the Brahmin, uh -huh, okay. the Brahmin class, because uh -huh. then the Brahmin, of course, he has also to pass on, mm -hmm. you know, the the teachings. Mm -hmm. okay? Wow, contemplation. Yes. <laughs> Parang may wow factor. Oh. <laughs> uh, I see. Okay. So now, um, another, I think, a common misconception, sir, is the karma. is the concept of karma. Yes. Uh, you know, yes. we Filipinos are so fond of using that. Yeah. But I think there's a misunderstanding. There's a misunderstanding. Yes. Because Can you elaborate on that, um, sir? Uh, uh, karma is cause effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is is the uh, is the cause effect thing? In other words, your good act. Mm -hmm. So it's not o in Filipino. We identify karma with the bad. Yes. The bad effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. The bad consequence. Mm -hmm. No. But in Hinduism as well as in Buddhism later on, mm -hmm. it's both good and bad. Mm -hmm. In other words, your good act will will produce good consequences, mm -hmm. and these okay. good consequences will be the cause later of mm -hmm. good acts. Okay, mm -hmm. the same with bad, uh, bad acts, mm -hmm. evil acts will bring evil consequences, mm -hmm. and okay. this evil consequence will be the cause of further evil. I see. So it's it's a uh, reaping what you sow. Yeah. Ah, okay. But it's not identified only with the bad. Uh -huh. It's also good. So when you reap what you sow, is it in the same lifetime or is it in the future lifetime? Because it's attached to the concept of reincarnation as Correct, well, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. So, uh, when you have accumulated the the bad karma, so mm -hmm. to say, mm -hmm. you in the next life you will be reincarnated in a in a lower being. I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the same way, if you are, uh, if you are, if you have accumulated good karma, mm -hmm. uh, then you will be reincarnated into a higher into an, uh, a, a, a human being oh with I a see. higher position maybe uh -huh, okay. okay but uh, the ultimate aim mm -hmm. is to is to stop that reincarnation mm -mm. oh okay so stop that incarnation mm -hmm. in other words in 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 the case of uh, hinduism as well mm -hmm. as in buddhism mm -hmm. there is no eternal damnation uh -huh, there's okay. always a there's second no chance. <laughs> yeah, uh -uh, there's okay. always a second chance. I see. And so you go through another lifetime, another right. reincarnation, mm -hmm. uh, until you really reach uh, the moksha, what they call the moksha, okay. or the liberation. Uh -huh. All right, okay. Yeah. So the moksha is, I have to compare it with my Christian understanding. Correct. So since there is no eternal damnation, there is no eternal life as well. Is that right? No, no. The there eternal is. life. Okay. The eternal life there will be uh -huh. uh, the, the, the union with the Brahman. Okay. Ah, all so right. when you are okay. united with the Brahman, uh -huh. you are no longer you will no longer be reincarnated. I see. So that's the stopping that's of the, the reincarnation. Stop, yeah. You are part now of uh, a, a kind of absolute. I see. Okay. okay. So the notion of individual immortality mm -hmm. is not there in uh, mm -hmm. in, in Hinduism. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. You you become part of this uh, of this Brahman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but there is no longer there's no longer a, 
an individual uh, living immortality. I, I see. <laughs> living okay. perpetually. Uh -huh, uh -huh, because okay. that is that is bad for mm -hmm, Hinduism mm -hmm. to be reincarnated again and again, uh -huh. to be born again and again. Mm -hmm. Because the intention of the reincarnation is to purify the yes. the soul until yeah. you put a stop on it because you have lived a righteous life yes. and therefore therefore you are now part of that absolute. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that that's a uh, very interesting, sir. No. Now, how how does that uh, reincarnation in the Hindu tradition differ from the concept of incarnation? Because in the Christian belief. It's only Jesus who Correct. incarnated, right? Uh -huh. And we don't reincarnate. We when we die, it's either we go to hell or we go to heaven. So how how do you, uh, okay. yeah, okay? How do you compare and contrast the okay. two concepts? Uh, this is my personal opinion. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. <coughs> uh, you see, in Christianity, we have heaven, mm -hmm. hell, mm -hmm. but we also have purgatory. I see. Remember? Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, <coughs> why do we have purgatory? Because it's unfair, you know, if mm -hmm. you have li you've been living a, a life of Sin. egoism mm -hmm. and then uh, at the last minute you said, oh, I don't like what I've been living. Mm -hmm. and so you go st because of that conversion, mm -hmm. last minute conversion, but that deathbed conversion, mm -hmm. you go to heaven. That's unfair, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So in other words, your, your body or your whole being was mm -hmm. not used to a, a life of loving. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be you have to be purged, mm -hmm. okay? So I would reconcile the notion of purgatory mm -hmm. with the notion of reincarnation. I see. So that the That you're cleansing. given another life uh -huh. uh, to, you know, to mm -hmm. purge yourself mm -hmm. and to earn mm -hmm. uh, the life of heaven. I see, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, th the concept of hell is, is also not a place, eh? Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. Because if hell were a place, mm -hmm then God would also be in hell mm -hmm. because God is everywhere. I see. Wow, <laughs> wow that's very philosophical. <laughs> so it's right. not a place, uh -huh. it's a state. Uh -uh. You know? Okay. Uh -huh. So um, this training, because you have mentioned that there are four types of yoga, mm -hmm. how do the Hindu train the young people uh, to achieve this kind of life, you know, aspiring for that absolute? Um, because you have mentioned that there are four types of yoga, and mm. I'm pretty sure that there is some sort of a discipline uh, yeah. for the young people to, to, fo to follow this path, right? Yeah. So can you give us an overview of how the Hindu train the young ones in order to leave uh, this well righteous you path? Have the, you have the, the, just like in our case, you mm -hmm. have the, uh, the stage of uh, discipleship. Mm -hmm. In other words, you, you, you live as a life of a student, okay? Mm -hmm. And then after leaving that type of student, mm -hmm. uh, you get married. Okay, okay. so you uh, you you now achieve you now go to the another stage of life. Okay, mm -hmm. adult life. Okay, mm -hmm. but eventually the end there is the life of contemplation. I see. Kay? Okay, so it's uh. the same. Uh, the, the different kind of yoga. Mm -hmm. You start with the student life. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, eventually mm -hmm. uh, you reach the. So you, you begin, you may begin with the yoga of uh, Raja Yoga, the mm -hmm. physical exercise. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you reach the, the, the yoga of action, uh -huh. okay, uh, which corresponds also to your stage of life. Okay. Okay? And uh, if you cannot still uh, reach that highest mm -hmm. stage of yoga, mm -hmm. the yo yoga of knowledge, then mm -hmm. uh, you go through a yoga of devotion. devotion. That's why they have many uh, mm -hmm. incarnation mm -hmm. of, of Brahman, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. All right. So it's like going through the different stages as well. Yes, yeah. That's why the highest point is the yoga of knowledge. Yeah. How about, uh, sir, the concept of nirvana? Ah, what that's is that? Okay, <laughs> uh, that's, bu that's Buddhism now. Ah, that's Buddhism now. Uh -huh. Is there a counterpart now in, uh, uh, in the Hindu tradition of this nirvana? The, the, the aim is moksha. Moksha. moksha, yeah, okay. okay. M O K S A. Okay, so that's uh, like the counterpart of the Nirvana in the Buddhist. Yes. In the Buddhist tradition. Yeah. yeah. All right. So okay. it's uh it's the yeah mm -hmm. it's total liberation now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. Um, okay, the total liberation of the soul. Yeah. I see. So All it's right. the highest kind of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so there's a request that uh, we discuss. Um, one case, no, of uh, oh. of 
one case study that applies to Hinduism. Mm. Uh, let us say, for example, those people who, let's say, in, in let's say in the in the Christian tradition, we have contemplatives, right, mm. or mystics. Mm -hmm. um, we have yung mga monks, for instance, especially the the early monks, and they live a life of contemplation. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, something similar in the Hindu tradition? Uh, that you know that people have been identified with a life of contemplation that they practically serve as role models like for example Gandhi you know being one of the most prominent uh, mm -hmm. um, followers of Hinduism how would he fare in that you know in that entire uh, in that entire life cycle of him you know being a prominent leader who had av advocated nonviolence mm -hmm. how would he fare is he in that stage of knowledge or devotion or karma or the the physical yoga uh, well uh, actually uh, um, the thing about Gandhi was he learned Hinduism mm -hmm. uh, from the West I see okay. and he learned Christianity from the East mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. other words uh, his uh, okay uh, his, his family was a uh, was uh, exposed to different kinds of mm -hmm. religion, mm -hmm. and that's why eventually he 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 was uh, open to all religions. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, there's an anecdote that mm -hmm. he he studied Christ the, the the Bible, okay, okay. and uh, he was he was very much impressed with the New Testament, mm -hmm. okay, uh, especially in the in the example of Christ. Uh, and see. there's an anecdote that he went to a church mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to worship. Mm -hmm. okay. But he was, uh, no, he was banned. Ah, I see. So okay. he said, uh, in his writings, he, he emulated, he, 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 he praised a lot mm -hmm. uh, the, the Christianity, mm -hmm. but he was not, he was against Christians uh -huh, okay. who did not practice the teachings. The teachings of uh -huh, love. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So you have in, in, in Hinduism Brahmins, no? Mm -hmm. uh, you have Brahmins. But mm -hmm. uh, the Brahmins are are supposed to have reached that uh, last stage mm -hmm. in life, which is the life of contemplation. Contemplation. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Okay, sir. So for our uh, last question for uh, this uh, module, um, what words would you like to impart to our students so that they can have an easy and quick recall of the ethical teachings of Hinduism. Okay. <coughs> uh, <coughs> I think the important thing here in Hinduism is uh, the concept of dharma, okay? the concept of duty. Mm -hmm. uh, you must do your duty uh, in corresponding to your states of life, mm -hmm. but with no attachment. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, as work, work is a sacrifice, mm -hmm. no? and you're doing it not only for the sake of yourself, mm -hmm. but for a kind of uh, social order. Mm -hmm. no? uh, you are contributing to the order in the universe or in society mm -hmm. by doing your duty mm -hmm. out of a sacrifice with mm -hmm. no attachment. Mm -hmm. So for example, your student, your duty is to study, mm -hmm. not because you want to please your parents, mm -hmm. not because you want to get high marks, mm -hmm. And therefore, you have to avoid cheating mm -hmm. because cheating is a disruption mm -hmm. of the order. Mm -hmm. okay? It's not doing your duty. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. So that's the important thing to remember in, mm -hmm. in Hinduism, the concept okay. of dharma, mm -hmm. uh, doing one's duty mm -hmm. out of sacrifice mm -hmm. with no attachment, mm -hmm. but as a contribution to the order in society and in the universe and in the universe I eventually see. all right so thank you very much for that sir and to our students we'll be back for the second module this time on buddhism have a good day